Welcome to the Ask Reverend Lee Show. We are so happy and delighted that you could join us, and we thank you for doing so. Again, let me say welcome to the Ask Reverend Lee Gospel Program. This is a religious forum program designed to help others get closer to God. I'm your host, Evangelist Lee McLean of Christ the Savior Ministry, and do we have an interesting, exciting, and attractive program planned for you today. The, the title of this program is In Search of Faith. And we titled this uh, In Search of Faith because all religious den denominations and entities, they have an object of faith. And what we're, what we're doing, what the whole human race is doing, is trying to find the one single, solitary object of faith that pleases God. Now, there's no such thing as interfaith. There's no such thing as ecumenical in the spiritual realm. Ecumenical is secular. Interfaith is secular because Christianity, true Christianity is not a part of interfaith. It's not. It stands alone by itself. And if you don't understand that Christianity stands alone, you're going to lead a lot of people astray and cause many, many people to miss heaven. Christianity stands alone alone and the object of faith stands alone the doctrine of the object of faith stands alone in the earlier church the church a denomination would excommunicate you would deny you the use of the name of Christ would uh, deny you worship, fellowship, and communion if you didn't have the proper concept of the object of faith. Uh, God. Not just any old God, but the God. And there's only one God. There is no other. There has never been uh, the one God, the triune God. The object of faith in Christianity is Trinitarian. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they are three persons in one. That's what this Bible says. And because the writers didn't put it in plain English that God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is also the Christian God called Jesus. And that's all. And that's all. There are no other names of God besides the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the God of Christianity called Jesus of Nazareth. 
Now, in this modern society, you can call God what you want to call him. And if you want to make him one God or thousands of gods, if you want to make everything God, that's all right with me. Because I'm commanded by God to let you do it. I just can't validate it. I have to tell you that there's only one God. Three persons in one. And without a Trinitarian view of the God, the creator of heaven and earth, uh, you don't have a covenant relationship with him. All humanity has a relationship with God by virtue of being his offspring. But that's not good enough. And it's about time the Christians woke up and smelled the coffee and started telling the world about this God named Jesus of Nazareth like they have been commanded to do under the, under the, under the threat, not the threat, under the assurance of divine punishment if you don't. I'm not talking about going to hell. I'm talking about divine punishment while you're still on this earth. Because a Christian's eternal destiny is assured once he meets the prerequisite requirement of faith in Jesus. That's why this program is entitled In Search of Faith. Now, I got uh, uh, some visuals that I'm, I'm going, to, going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you why it is necessary, absolutely necessary, that we search for the true faith. Because the true faith is what is the pathway to a right relationship with God. Not just a relationship. Remember, all humanity has a relationship with God. You can find that in Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 30, 22 to 29, or 22 to 31. All humanity has a relationship with God because we are his offsprings and we are under his providential care. But that's not good enough. Because on, on camera, where are they? On camera four, you can't, uh, you can't read it. I got to make those letters larger. So I'm going to be off camera and I'm going to read, uh, read that top paragraph to you. Uh, it says, God's promise of salvation for you and I'm talking about you humanity you all ethnic people groups on the face of the earth it was in the mind of God before the beginning of time before creation before the world was to save mankind that's a statement of truth it was in the mind of God before he began the creative process to save mankind from his wrath, his eternal wrath. But his plan, this eternal plan of God was a mystery from Genesis to Malachi. It was a mystery. And if, 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 if it's about time the preachers started preaching about the mystery of God instead of the Old Testament people of God. 
But his plan, his eternal plan was a mystery, a, a, a secret, hidden, not fully revealed in the Old Testament. God's eternal plan was first made known by Jesus of Nazareth. Let me read that again. God's eternal plan was first made known by Jesus of Nazareth the Christ because he received it directly from God. The plan, the eternal plan of God is only found in the New Testament, the Christian's New Testament. The verifiable plan is found in the Christian's New Testament. But in order to understand the plan, you need four or five things. Uh, you need knowledge of the plan. You need uh, uh, insight to the plan. You need spiritual discernment of the plan. You need an understanding of the plan. You need comprehension, the ability to comprehend the plan. And then you need the wisdom to use it. Now, having said that, I'm going to continue as usual on this program. This is a question and answer. We're going to read a passage of scripture. Then we're going to uh, give a brief overview. And then have, uh, have prayer. And then go into a discussion of... Uh, of our search for faith. And when you search for faith, you're really looking for Jesus who is God. And when I use God on this program, I use God in, in the sense that he is the creator of heaven and earth, the giver and sustainer of all life. He is also the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Lord of glory. That's how I use the term Jesus or God. They are synonymous. But each have their own part in the plan. Don't attribute it something to Jesus that God did. Don't attribute it something that Jesus did to the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit did to Jesus because each of the three entities speak in first person singular I. I believe that's right. First person singular, I. God spoke in first person singular, I. I'll go to uh, Joshua chapter 24. Jesus spoke in first person singular in John chapter 5. 20, 29, John 6, 39, 40, 47, and 54, Matthew 5, chapter, Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes. So, we're going to 